If you've got hip hop questions, I've got hip hop answers. Email me right now at d.podcast at gmail.com. That's d.podcast at gmail.com. If you have that hip hop question, I will try my hardest to give you a hip hop answer. It may not be the greatest answer, but God damn it, it's an answer. This week, we don't have an email. We actually have a tweet. I have a tweet here from Dominic uh, Colorosi. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly, Dominic, uh, about this ops, this Hobson retirement issue. He says next vid has to discuss Hobson leaving rap. If you guys don't know out there today, uh, which is December 17th, Hobson announced his retirement via social media. Uh, He put up a post and he said, I just wanted to take this time to say I appreciate all of you who have supported my music over the past few years. A lot of you have told me stories about how I've changed your life. You too have changed mine in ways that you could never imagine. Unfortunately, tonight is the night that I'm actually moving away to Australia. Over the past few years, I have come to the conclusion that this profession just is not for me. So I'm going to venture out into new areas of my life. I will always be an MC at heart, but this rap stuff just isn't for me. I hope you guys can respect it. I've signed my half of Funk Volume of the Funk Volume label over to my business partner, Dame. I wish Swizz, Dizzy Wright and Jaron Benton good luck in their careers. Thank you all. I'm out. Sincerely, Marcus Jamal Hobson aka Hobson and he has a picture of uh of him you know with his bags ready to go to Australia now I've heard about this rumor a few times but I never knew if there was actually any uh validity to it that Marcus was uh he was gonna move away uh because he just couldn't take all the pressures of the business I always felt that there was uh, a certain charm in being a misfit, in being the ma- the maladjusted artist who really can't blend in with the industry. And that was always his main thing because he was, you know, what was supposed to counteract the mainstream and he was supposed to be the savior and all that jazz for, you know, the introverted rap fan because he himself is an introvert. Now, there is that appeal until you actually find out that somebody is really consistent with how they feel and they decide to leave the game completely. Now, that's that's a whole lot of truth for you. You know, you you find charm in people like, you know, people like Odd Future who are total fucking weirdos. And that's sort of what makes them who they are. And with exception to like Earl, who I think is the only one who would actually do something like what Hobson just did, just fucking go and disappear. I think everybody else is just going to remain misfits within the industry. Now, I want to say that, you know, to all the fans that are disappointed and this this is a very hard thing to to swallow. And the fact that we own the music that's made by these artists and the fact that they put out stuff for us so we can buy it, so we can go to their show, so we can give them feedback, so we can love it, so we can hate it, whatever. We start to feel like we own that artist when all we own is the music. And in fact, we don't even own the music. We own our opinions of how we feel about the music. The music has a life of its own and the artist is separate from that, uh, separate from the music. So when an artist leaves up out of nowhere, if it's not by a gunshot, if it's not by incarceration, if it's not by poor record sales, it's shocking that somebody would walk away from their craft. But as I said, he is, I guess, very consistent in the fact that he is a misfit within the rap game. I've always said that you do not retire from rap. Rap retires you. And I still feel that way. I can't possibly see next year rolling along. And 
I'm not sure when he does these ill minds. I, I would pretty much say it's probably around the beginning of the summer, maybe spring. Maybe you guys correct me, uh, remind me when he does these. And he's got eight coming up next year. I, I think that it's possible that he'll never put out an album again. Most of the gripe that his fans had was the fact that it took him so long from Raw to actually get to Knock Madness. So maybe Hobson's creative process takes longer than the average artist. So maybe that part is something that he won't miss. But I find it very hard to believe that there won't be, you know, these releases at least every year. Because I've always said that what really sticks with you as far as Hobson is the Ill Mind series. It's not his albums. They're average at best, in my opinion. And I'm somebody who I could consider myself a huge Hobson fan. Not because I have knowledge of his albums, uh, you know, not not because I enjoy the Ill Mind series, but I feel like I have a stake in Hobson's growth. Years ago, I was on a a website on a message board called rapmusic.com and they would have these these battles every um they would have these battles every year they were called the grbs and this was like a big deal on this website and all the best uh talented uh the the battle rappers would battle on this website okay i actually participated in one of these believe it or not i remember back in 2002 there was this guy who was constantly fighting on the message board about quality of music about man fuck you guys i don't give a fuck if i can't battle i make better music than anyone on this site and people laughed at him and this was around the time when i guess hobson's biggest record is probably um pans in the kitchen Uh, mom pans in the kitchen if that's if that's the actual name of the record but that was like his biggest thing And, you know, maybe a few postings of like performances that he did at like talent shows. There was no fucking shows. Nobody gave a shit about Hobson at at that point. But he believed in himself. So I feel that I have a stake in Hobson's career because I saw those small little moments on the Internet. You know, to see so many people care about him retiring now and how at the beginning, no one gave a shit if he walked away from the mic back then. And through all that work that it must have taken him to get to this point, I find it extremely hard to believe that he'll just walk away cold turkey. Now, the one part about that posting on Facebook that we should be paying attention to, it's not I'm going to Australia. It's when he says, I will always be an MC at heart. Now, what does that mean? Do you mean to tell me that as competitive as Hobson is, as lyrically argumentative as Hobson is, that if two years from now there was some new guy out in the scene and maybe this guy was doing horrorcore records, you know, that sort of Hobson sound, and he would be akin to Hobson, that Hobson's not going to jump out here and, you know, puff out his chest. I find that extremely hard to believe. But albums? Albums, absolutely. I think you've heard your last Hobson album, which is something that isn't that hard to to, to consider. Could he continue his online following through just doing the Ill Mind series? Absolutely. I can totally see something like that. Hobson sort of reverse engineering, you know, relevancy, you know, which is fuck you album and just one big record every year that's gonna go fucking viral you understand but you do not own these people and neither do i if they decide to walk away it's what they simply decide to do and we must just thank them that they were able to grace us with their talent no matter how much you hated hobson no matter how much you love him You knew who he was. He was a part of the conversation. And as long as somebody is part of the conversation, they should always be respected.